Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. We're continuing with our subject of sports. And in this time, we're talking, the lesson six is talking about playing favorites. Playing favorites, that means we're going to focus on, let's think about your favorite sports teams. So when we think about playing favorites, we're going to think about who are your favorite sports teams and what do people do to support their favorite sports teams. Well, we can say a lot of things about that. Of course, when we think about our, famous, our favorite sports teams, Koreans are very enthusiastic about cheering for their favorite sports teams. For example, the Korean national team, especially, for example, the Korean national soccer team. Do you remember the 2002 World Cup? Maybe it's too long ago, you don't remember. But um, at that time, it was really, really a big event in Korea. This is at Kwangwamun Square, right? A Kwangwamun in downtown Seoul. It's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not Kwangwamun. Kwangwamun is over here, Chogi. This is City Hall. This is City Hall. I forgot because they changed the building. It, it looks different now. But look at this plaza. Wow, there's so many people. I mean, there's a street here. There's another street here. But there's so many people, you can't even see the streets. No cars today, right? Because there are so many people cheering for the 2002 soccer, uh, World Soccer Tournament, right? Which is called the World Cup, the World Soccer Cup. So it's amazing. It was really amazing. I was actually in Korea at this time. I remember driving over, this is Kwangamun over here. I remember driving by, my friend was on the back of my motorcycle and was taking pictures. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. And so yeah, it was really amazing. So many people came out and uh, cheered for their soccer team. Okay, people will go crazy uh, supporting their, their team, right? These people here, what, what country has blue people? No, I'm just kidding. They're not really blue. They're using blue paint on their faces to support the color of their favorite team. Where are they from? Well, we can see from their headbands that it looks like Japanese. That's the, the flag of Japan, right? The, the sun, the rising sun. And uh, these guys are Japanese sports fans. Okay, so they're out cheering their team. And you see they're really enthusiastic about cheering for their team. They wear crazy costumes and they paint their faces or their bodies different colors. These guys are Japanese fans. We can, whoa, we can also see other examples, right? Who are these guys? Blue and yellow, right? And these three people here, they look like they're aliens from another world, right? No, I'm just kidding. They're wearing some kind of thing over their head. They're from Sweden. Of course, that's the Swedish flag. So these are Swedish fans, again, probably soccer fans, who are cheering for their team. Look at this guy. He really, he really went all out painting his, his whole, almost his whole body. For, uh, for the game. This kid, where is this kid from? You can see the flag of America, the stars and the stripes. So he's an American fan. And these people over here, where are they from? Well, we know this red cross, we've seen it so many times before. That, of course, is the symbol for Switzerland. So we can see fans from different countries will go crazy, kind of. They'll do uh, very impressive or very unusual things to show their support for their home team, for their home team, or whatever team they're favored of. Now, of course, these are international sporting events. Within the nation, inside of America, for example, people won't dress their, won't paint the American flag on their bodies because everybody's American. But like the Chicago, if somebody's from Chicago and somebody's from New York, they'll wear the colors or paint their, their bodies in the colors of their home or city team. Okay, and they will do that, or they'll wear the jerseys, the famous uh, jerseys. Jersey is the sport shirt that the athlete wears with the number on the back of their favorite player on that team. And that's what fans will do. They'll show their support. Okay, well, before we go into the reading, of course, we need to learn some vocabulary. So let's take a look at some vocabulary having to do with supporting your favorite team. Our first word is, of course, 
a group of people working together. Look at these big guys here. They're very big, aren't they? They look strong. They look tough. This, of course, is a football team. When I say football, I mean American football. Some, of course, Europeans say football is soccer. They don't use the word soccer. But in America, if you say football, you're talking about this. You're not talking about soccer. You're talking about wearing the helmet and the football, throwing it. It's a different sport. But anyway, whether it's football, soccer, or European football, what do you have? You have a group of people working together. Of course, we say that's a team. And we talked about that before. You will support your favorite team. Next word, beyond, at a greater point. So if you're here and you want to go beyond, you want to go further down the road, the word, of course, is further. You want to go beyond. You want to go at a greater point than where you are now. Of course, further doesn't just mean distance. It can also mean, you know, if you want to uh, improve your studies, you want to improve something further, right? Or you, you have, are there, are there any further questions is another uh, very common expression. Are there more questions? Are there questions beyond right now that we can explore these different areas? So in some cases, we have different expressions with further. Are there any further questions? Uh, we have to go a little further, okay? Of course, we can get confused with far. Farther. If you say farther, A-R-T-H-E-R, you're only talking about distance, farther. We have much farther to go today. Okay, number three, a person who supports a team or a person. We talked about that, right? These people who are dressed in different colors in their team, uh, these people, this is, like I said before, this is inside America. They're not, they're not dressed in the national flag of America. They're dressed in the colors of their team, probably their college team. And of course, they're called fans. Of course, that's it right here, fan. A fan is a person who is supporting their team. Now you can have a super fan super fans. Most people are normal fans, right? They cheer for their team, they go out, but super fans, they really go crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay, number four, a small tasty meal. So sometimes between breakfast and lunch, you get hungry, Be especially between lunch and dinner, you might get hungry. What do you want? You want to eat a snack, a snack. Please remember that. Snack is countable. Let's have a snack. Not let's have snack, no, let's have a snack. Did you have a snack uh, this afternoon, okay? What do you want to have for a snack, okay? So snack is countable in this case. We say it's like, it's, but even though if you have like many pieces of fruit and maybe a candy bar, you call it all a snack. So a snack is kind of like the entire thing that you eat uh, during that short time. That's a snack. But usually it's just one thing, like a candy bar or a piece of fruit. Okay. Number five, to help or to hold up. Now, if you help somebody or if you're holding something up, what are you doing? You are supporting. You're supporting that. This is what fans do. Fans support their teams. But you can also use support in many different ways. Uh, ideas. For example, if a house is built on a hill, you might have like pillars supporting the house, right? It just means to hold something up. So support can be used in different ideas. In this case, though, we're talking about supporting a team, right? You're showing your, um, your energy or your uh, support for that team. Number six, very serious and extreme. If something's very serious, very extreme, we say it is intense. Sometimes, of course, at the international level, at the World Cup level, soccer players are the best in the world. Their play is very intense. They're very serious about their sport, and sometimes they do some extreme moves, right? Like maybe they kick backwards, right? The goal is behind them, they kick, and the ball goes behind them into the goal. That is extreme, that's very intense. And of course, as fans, we like to see those intense moments. That's what makes the game very exciting. Seven, having a lot of energy. So if somebody has a lot of energy, we say they're energetic. That's very easy, right? Energy is the noun. Energetic is the adjective. He has a lot of energy. He is energetic. Okay, so that would be the adjective for energy. Eight, to quit or to stop trying. 
Okay, if somebody stops trying, like uh, they're boxing and somebody falls down, they can't get up, they say, I've had enough, what do they do? They give up. Sometimes when kids fight, uh, they shouldn't fight really, but sometimes you'll see the kids will, will hold the other kid on the ground and say, do you give up? Or usually brothers, when they're fighting, right? One, one brother say, will you give up? You know, stop fighting, right? Let's uh, stop fighting. Do you, but they want the other person to give up. Or sometimes in a video game, you say, oh, it's hopeless. I don't want to play to the end because I know I can't win. So I give up. That means to quit or to stop trying. I give up or do you give up? Okay. Number nine, an entertaining and difficult action. What is an entertaining, entertaining and difficult action? We can say a trick. A trick is something that magicians, this is a magic trick, right? We usually think of trick in terms of magic. Some famous magicians will do tricks that are difficult to do, but they're very entertaining. It's also difficult to figure out how did he do that, right? And that is a trick. Number 10, <laughs> what the heck is that? Okay, that's not a real animal, right? It's an animal, a personality that is a symbol of a team. So somebody who's a symbol of a team, you have different symbols for different teams in Korea, right? But we call those things mascot, a mascot. So different teams will have different uh, animals or uh, like a person in a funny costume, and they are the mascot. So usually it's an animal like bears or eagles, dolphins, uh, something like that. They will be the mascot for the team. The next one, number 11, is to walk over violently. Of course, this is acting right here. She's walking over this guy violently. She's trampling this guy. But usually when you think about this word trample, it's not just one person. It's like a crowd of people, many people, and maybe they're scared or maybe they're excited or they're very enthusiastic and they don't think about safety, right? They're just running as a group. And sometimes this can be very dangerous, especially in crowded or narrow areas where many people are moving and somebody falls down, other people might not even know that person is there because there's so many people, they will trample the person who's on the ground. So usually this is not, you know, it's usually many people walking over another person, or it doesn't even have to be a person. You can trample the ground. If there's grass and many people trample the grass, then they walk over the grass. Maybe they ruin the grass. So you trample in an area. Okay. 12, a sweet drink with bubbles in it. A sweet drink with bubbles in it. You're thinking bubble tea? Well, we think about soda. The bubbles are a little, uh, 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 gas, little uh, bubbles of gas. Of course, when you pour Coca-Cola or cider, uh, you say cider in Korea, in, in America we'd say Sprite or we would say a 7-Up, uh, you have the carbonation, the little bubbles that rise uh, in the drink. And that's a street, sweet drink with bubbles in it, not bubble tea. Oh, you could say that, but in this case we're talking about soda. Three, ink that is under the skin forever. So somebody will have, uh, you know, an artist will, will draw or put this ink under the skin of a person. It's kind of painful to do. And once it's there, it's there forever. You can't change it. So later on, oh, I don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's there. And it's very painful to get, it, to get it off. So be very careful if you do this. But they're calling it a tattoo. Tattoo. Tattoo isn't an English word, by the way. It comes from the South Pacific. When the English sailors uh, were in that area and they saw the natives, they had tattoos. And that's what they called it in, on those islands. They said tattoo. So the English sailors brought that word back to England with them and it became part of the English language. Tattoo. Very interesting. Anyway, so that's a tattoo. 14. Being focused and trying hard to do something. Being focused on something, very, trying very hard to do it, it means you are dedicated. You are dedicated. You are focused on your task. So you are very dedicated in doing your task. Now, dedicated is an adjective. The noun, of course, is dedication. So he has dedication. He is dedicated. He has dedication. He is dedicated. Okay, next one, 15. 
Whoa, this is very dangerous, right?、Uh, bullfighting. To move suddenly and powerfully in one direction. To move suddenly and powerfully in one direction. What do bulls do? Bulls charge, right? They suddenly start running towards something, and a bull is very powerful. It's charging. So it's not just bulls. Horses can charge. People can charge. Teams can charge. A crowd of people can charge.、It、just means moving quickly and powerfully in one direction. Sixteen to cover with colored liquid. Of course, there's many forms or many ways to do this. What is this guy doing? Of course, he is painting a house. But of course, we can also think about artists like Rembrandt or Monet. Right?、Uh, they are using paint to paint beautiful pictures. So to cover with colored liquid, whether it's very simple like painting a house or painting a masterpiece like the Mona Lisa. Right?、Uh, you're painting. It's just to paint. Okay, well, that's the words. Let's take a look at the exercises. Okay, the first one here. We need to fill in the blanks for all of these. The first one is our soccer beep isn't very good. We need practice. So our soccer what? When we talk about a group of people who play soccer, they're not very good. We need to practice. So our soccer class, our soccer team, our soccer fan, or our soccer group. If you look at three of these, if you look at A, B, and D, those are all about a group of people. C is about one person. Our soccer fan isn't very good. That sounds strange. Our soccer fan is is strange. So let's get rid of C. We have A, B, and D. Those are all talking about a group of people. But what's the most common way to describe a group of people who play sports? Do we say a soccer class? No, a class is for studying. Do we say a soccer group? That's close, but it's not that common to say a soccer group. It's much more common to say soccer team, and that's the answer. Our soccer team isn't very good. We need practice. So team is the best. Remember, A, B, and D are all a group of people. But B is the best answer because it's the most common way to describe a group of people who play a sport together. Okay, number th、uh, three. We're skipping two. That storm was really what? That storm was really beep. It almost knocked that tree over. So a storm that is very strong. It almost knocks a tree is strong, but a storm comes along and tries almost knocks the tree down. What is it? That storm was really brief, intense, upset, or heavy. Which one sounds the best? Storm was brief. That means very quick. So that's not right. The storm was very intense.、Uh, intense, remember, is very focused and、uh, very strong in some area a- and extreme. Right. So if a storm is extreme or、uh, focused on some area, it is intense and it's very strong. The storm was upset. That doesn't make sense because storms don't have feelings. <laughs> Oh, that storm looks angry. Oh, that storm looks happy. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, and heavy. We don't say storms are heavy. That's a, that's a strange、uh, relationship. We don't say that. We say storms are intense or fierce or strong or dangerous. But intense is a very good word to use to describe a storm. Okay, number five. I know I just ate supper, but I really want a what? So, what do you usually eat after supper? After supper, what do you normally eat? You want something sweet. Usually, what after I eat supper, I want something sweet after supper. So, I know I just ate supper, but what do I want? You want what? A. Dessert. B. Snack. C. Fork. D. Breakfast. Be careful here with A. Dessert. Okay. There's two words that are very similar. Dessert. And the other word is dessert. Now, be very careful. If this word had two s's, it would be correct because that's common. After dinner, I always want to have a little bit of dessert, like something sweet—a piece of cake, maybe a cookie, some candy. You know, just to have after dinner, and that's very common to have dessert. After dinner, but desert with one S is like the Sahara Desert, 
right? Very dry, no trees, no water. So, of course, you don't eat the Sahara Desert after dinner. Well, that's crazy, right? So, desert, be careful. Desert or dessert, right? This is desert, not dessert, so it doesn't fit. Okay. B, snack. What is dessert? Dessert is like a snack, right? So, that is, an, that is the answer right there. A snack, B. A fork, I really want a fork. That doesn't make sense. I want breakfast after you ate supper? No, you have to sleep first, next morning, then you have breakfast. The best answer here is snack, because I know I just ate supper. I just ate supper, I know that. But I really want a snack. I want something more to eat. Now usually after supper, after dinner, by the way, Americans say dinner and supper are the same. It's the meal you have in the evening. After that, we usually have dessert. Dessert is only after supper. We don't have dessert after lunch. You don't have dessert after breakfast. After breakfast, after lunch, you have a snack. But you can also have a snack after dinner. After dinner, you can have dessert, or you could also call it a snack. It doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, that's kind of complicated. Number seven. My dad always beats me in school. What does your dad always do with you in school. Does he clean you in school? I hope not. The other kids were, <laughs> right? Strange dad. Okay, then don't do that. Uh, my dad always packs me in school, puts you in a suitcase. No, that's crazy. My dad always supports me in school. He supports me in school. Uh-huh, that's interesting. Or my dad always brings me in school. Supports sounds correct. What about brings? Can we say my dad always brings me in school? No, because he used brings, brings you to school. So the correct answer is support. My dad always supports me in school. You support someone in something. I support him in his efforts. I support him in his uh, 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 field or in his job, but you bring somebody to a place. So support is the correct answer here. Okay, well, let's uh, take a break here. We'll take a short break and we'll go into the reading section next, so don't go away. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Let's go over the reading section together. We're on lesson six, playing favorites, talking about supporting your favorite sports team as a fan. So let's begin. Do you watch baseball? If you do, you probably have a favorite team. Do you cheer and shout when you watch a game? Are you happy if they win and upset if they lose? Then you are a true fan. This is kind of a, a little bit of a long paragraph here. They're asking a question at the beginning, do you watch? And baseball is just an example. Okay, they could have used any sport here. Do you watch baseball? Do you watch basketball? Do you watch soccer? It doesn't matter. It's just an example of a certain sport. So they're using baseball as an example. But like I said, we could use any sport. Do you watch baseball? If you do, if you do watch baseball, because some people don't watch baseball. Some people don't watch any sports. Right? Some people are not sports fans. They are not interested in sports. But some people are. Many people are. So, if you do watch baseball, you probably, probably have a favorite team. People who watch sports, whether it's baseball or basketball or soccer, they probably have a favorite team if they watch the sport, right? Do you cheer and shout when you watch a game? If you watch baseball or soccer or basketball, do you cheer and shout, yeah, go, go? Are you happy if they win? Are you upset if they lose? How do you feel if, you're, if the team wins or loses, right? If you're happy or upset, depending on whether they win or not, then you are a true fan, okay? So if you can answer yes to all these questions, you are a true fan. Do you watch baseball? Yes. Uh, do you have a favorite team? Yes. Do you cheer and shout when you watch a game? Yes. Are you happy if they win? Yes. Are you upset if they lose? Yes then you are a true fan. And remember, it doesn't matter, baseball, basketball, soccer, any sport. If you can answer yes to any sport like this, then you are a true fan of that sports team. Every team has fans, right? Every team, think about it. Every team, there are people who support them, who cheer for them. 
Even children's teams have fans. If you play baseball or soccer in your elementary school, you have fans. Their parents, your parents, cheer for you or for the the players. Sometimes the parents get more excited than the kids. Right? This is kind of maybe, maybe it could be a little problem in, in America, for example, when kids are playing baseball. Sometimes the parents will yell at the at the referee, at the judge, "What are you doing? Why?" You know, they'll get very excited, and the kids just, "Oh, I'm just playing baseball." Right? But the parents are very excited about it. Okay, so the parents are very enthusiastic fans for their kids, of course. Fans support their teams in all sorts of ways. In all sorts of ways. Of course, they clap, and shout, and wear team T-shirts and caps. But some fans go a little further. Okay, so this part is talking about the fans. What do the fans do? They support their teams. How? They clap. They shout. Yay! Right? They also wear. Team T-shirts, right? Like these guys back here. They wear the certain color with the names of their teams on them. But some fans go a little further. They go even beyond that. They do something even more. What do they do? Well, really dedicated fans paint themselves. <laughs> they might color their face or even their whole body. Others even get tattoos of their favorite team symbols. Okay, so really dedicated fans, people who are very dedicated, Yilshim, right? Yilshim, hey, people who are very enthusiastic or dedicated fans, paint themselves like these three girls here. They painted their faces, right, and parts of their bodies.、Um, they might color their face, which is what they did, or even their whole body. Well, <laughs> they painted. All, everywhere, that's crazy. Okay, others even get tattoos. We don't see any tattoos, but sometimes people will get tattoos of their favorite team symbols. So these girls are really dedicated fans, right? These guys back here, they're just wearing the shirt. They're like normal fans, but these three girls are really dedicated fans. They're painting their faces and their bodies to support their team. Okay, let's look at some really dedicated fans. In action, right? We can see these fans here, and we can see that they're pretty dedicated. They haven't painted their faces, but look at what they do. Let's take a look. Look at what they're doing. They're chanting something. Now, this is a foreign language. I think it's from Spain. I think these guys are Spanish fans. And look, they're really enthusiastic, right? They all know their team cheer together. They all know what to do together, and of course. If you notice, they're all drinking probably beer, so they're getting very excited about their team. <laughs> okay, but these, this is an example of very dedicated fans who are all acting together and cheering together, singing a song together. Right? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, in this part we say in Spain the soccer games get so intense that fans can even die. When a team wins, the whole stadium erupts. Fans charge down to the field. There are so many people that some can get trampled and killed. Soccer gets a lot of people very excited. So I remember reading in the news or seeing in the news some cases of this happening a, a while ago. I haven't seen it recently, so I hope that they've changed this. But in Spain, the soccer games get so adjective that. That's a good sentence construction right there. So intense, so crazy, so fierce, so something. Adjective that, and then result. What's the result? That fans can even die. So so intense that fans can even die. How? When a team wins, the whole stadium erupts. What does that mean? It's like a volcano. A volcano erupts. Boom! It shoots out a lot of lava and stuff from from inside the volcano. There's a lot of pressure building up. It's like a team. The team is watching their their their、uh, the fans are watching their team play the game. And when they win, it's like all that pressure. Boom! It erupts. The whole stadium. People are shouting and cheering. They're very excited. It erupts. Fans charge like the bull, right? They charge down to the field. There are so many people. 
again, that. Here it's very similar. Here we have so adjective that. In this case, so many, and then a uh, noun, that. So you can say so many that, so many uh, animals, so much rain, that. And then the result, some can get trampled and killed, and that's the result. So this is a good construction to remember. So many that or so adjective that. So so quantity that or so adjective that. It's a good expression or good construction to remember. And then after that you have a result. What's the result? Right? Don't just stop it here. There are so many people. I mean don't, don't stop it here because we want to know there are so many people. So many people what? That. Oh okay. There are so many people that some get trampled and killed, and that's terrible, right? Because so many people are running to the field, some people fall down, everybody else doesn't realize it, and they step on them, and some people get killed. Soccer gets a lot of people very excited, and it's true. If you th think about the news, we can, s we can hear uh, certain countries, it's very it kind of dangerous. Right? Different teams will fight each other, even. Or after the game, Fans who are very crazy will go out in the streets and they'll turn cars over, right? So it gets a lot of people very excited. Do you have a favorite mascot? Each team has a different mascot. They are fun and energetic. Being a mascot would be exciting. You wear a costume and cheer and clap. Okay, so you think about your team, your favorite team. What is the mascot of your team? I remember when I was in college, we used to have a very funny mascot for a football team, right? He would run out in between the plays and at halftime and do funny and energetic things. And we, you know, many people would laugh. So do you, sometimes the mascots have fans, <laughs> right? So do you have a favorite mascot? Are you a fan of a certain mascot? Of course, each team has a different mascot. This is kind of funny, right? These two mascots here, they're, they're kind of playing, playing together here, right? They're fun and energetic. They, they kind of do fun things. Being a mascot would be exciting. It's something that you could do too. If you go to college or, or maybe on your high school, uh, think about, hey, if you're a fun and energetic person, you like to, to do funny things and you like sports, think about being a mascot. Wear a funny costume, do funny things. You wear a costume, you cheer, you clap, you get the crowd excited also. You help uh, the crowd become excited about the game. Mascots can be anything. Squirrels, jet planes, whales, you name it, and it's probably a mascot. Mascots also do tricks and perform for the crowd. Sometimes the mascots of different teams even fight each other. That's kind of funny, right? They're not really fighting each other, they're kind of playing. But they can be anything. A mascot can be anything. These are, you know, animal, squirrel, whale is another type of animal, but they can also be jet planes, right? They can be machines, you know? A mascot can be anything that the team wants to adopt as a symbol for their team, okay? You name it. You name it means anything is possible. Anything you can think of. Your imagination. It's only limited by your imagination. You name it and it can be true. And it's probably a mascot. You name it and it's probably a mascot. Anything you think of, can think of, anything your imagination can think of, it's probably a mascot for some team somewhere. Mascots also do tricks. They perform for the crowd. Like I said, they do difficult and entertaining actions. They perform these tricks for the crowd. Sometimes it's standing on their, their, uh, their hands, walking on their hands, or, or doing cartwheels. Sometimes the mascots of different teams even fight each other. But like I said, they're just playing. They're, they're really not serious. And besides, they're in big costumes. They're not gonna hurt each other, <laughs> okay? Being a fan is fun. At the games, you get to drink soda and eat snacks. Everyone around you is excited to see the game and excited to see their team win. It's no fun if your team loses, but there's always the next game. A good fan never gives up. Okay, so let's go over here. Being a fan is fun. Now, this passage is all related. This sentence is kind of like the topic sentence for all of this here for this paragraph because it talks about all the fun things that fans do. For example, at the games you get to drink soda and eat snacks. At home, you don't really get to drink soda and eat snacks a lot because your mom says, no, don't, don't drink soda 
don't eat a lot of snacks. But at the games, you can have fun. You can drink soda, you can have a snack, because that's part of the game. At many baseball games, people will eat hot dogs, right? Because that's part of the game. Everyone around you, everyone around you, if you go to the game and you're sitting in the stands, everybody around you, the crowd around you, is also excited to see the game. So you get that excitement too. And excited to see their team win. So and kind of links these two sentences together. It's not a very good way uh, to do it, but to keep your sentences short, that's what they're doing here. So everyone around you is one, excited to see the game, and two, excited to see their team win. How It's no fun, of course, if your team loses. If your team loses, that's not fun. But don't worry, there's always the next game. So fans, if they lose the game, they go, oh, that's too bad. But they don't give up, right? They think about the next game. A good fan never gives up. You say, oh, they lost the game. Ugh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna support them anymore. No, a good fan supports their team even if their team loses. And they think, okay, next time we will win. We'll get them next time. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the comprehension of this story. How well do you remember it? How well did you understand it? Again, our first question is always about the overall topic or subject of the reading passage. In this case, this story is about what? What's the story about? A, playing sports, B, making teams, C, supporting teams, and D, winning games. So this story was really about fans, wasn't it? It was about uh, who are the fans and what do they do? And what do fans really do? Do they play sports? No. Do, do fans make teams? No. Do fans win games? No. But do fans support teams? Yes. So this story is about supporting teams. It's about fans who support their team. Number two. A true fan. Beep. So we need one answer that is true about what a true fan, what a real fan is. So three of these will not be correct, but only one will be correct to describe what is a true fan. So a true fan is a mascot? No, that doesn't, that's not true. The mascot is only one person. There are many fans in the stadium. So A is not right. A true fan practices often. They practice clapping and cheering. You don't need to practice that. You just do it. <laughs> so that's not true. Uh, a true fan never gives up. Why don't we talk about that, right? Sometimes a team will lose. One team has to lose. But a true fan, a real fan of the team, says, okay, we'll get them next time. They don't give up. So Caesar, answer. A true fan never gives up. Let's look at D. A true fan is upset if his or her team wins. If his or her team wins, they're upset? It doesn't make sense. So that's not right. So again, C is the correct answer. A true fan never gives up. Let's move on to number three. Fans support their teams. How do fans support their teams? That's by and also sometimes in. Right? It also shows like different ways. Let's take a look. Fans support their teams by giving up, by painting the players in many different ways or in easy sorts of ways. Which one is true? By giving up. No, because we just said a true fan never gives up. So that's not right. Fans support their teams by painting the players. <laughs> so before every game, thousands of people go to the locker room and paint the players. No, that would be crazy. That would be chaos. That doesn't make sense. By painting themselves, not the players. So that's not right. Fans support their teams in many different ways. Hmm. Fans wear different clothing to support their team. They go to the games. They shout. They clap their hands. Sometimes they paint their bodies. Those are all different ways, aren't they? Hmm. C is the right answer. Fans support their teams in many different ways. And we saw those different ways that they support their teams. What about D? Fans support their teams in easy sorts of ways. The passage didn't really talk about easy sorts of ways. Sure, just wearing the clothes is easy, but some fans are very 
uh, dedicated and they paint themselves. That's not easy. Or they wear crazy costumes or do nice dances, right? Those aren't easy. Those are difficult. So that's not right either. The best answer, of course, is C. Fans support their teams in many different ways. Okay, number four. In Spain, fans what? What is true about fans in Spain? What did we read about? What did it say in the reading? In Spain, fans win many games. Remember, fans are not playing the game. The fans don't win the game, right? And besides, uh, in Spain, you know, half the teams are going to lose. So that doesn't make sense. B, get a lot of people excited. Fans get a lot of people excited. Fans get people excited? No, fans don't get people excited. The game gets people excited. In Spain, fans blow up stadiums. <laughs> now, of course, <clears throat> blow up, they're playing on that word that we saw before, erupt. Erupt <clears throat> was in the passage. Remember, I said erupt is like there's a lot of pressure, and suddenly, boom, it's released. The fans have a lot of pressure in them, and then say they see they win, they go, yay, and they release that energy, they erupt. But that doesn't mean blow up. Blow up means using explosives like a bomb and blowing up a stadium to destroy the stadium. They're different, right? Fans can erupt, but fans don't really blow up. <laughs> it's a different meaning. So it's similar. They're trying to trick you, but don't be confused. In Spain, fans are sometimes killed. Now that is something that we read in the story, and it's very unfortunate, right? So that's the right answer, unfortunately. Fans are sometimes killed because the fans get very excited. They charge down to the field. Maybe some people might fall down. Other people behind them don't see them, and they step all over them, and sometimes they can get killed. So that's very dangerous. By the way, it's not just in Spain. That's happened in other countries, too, and not just at sports games. It's also happened at concerts as well. So if you're ever in an area where there's so many people, be careful. Uh, think about where you are and what you're doing, and think about, you know, things get out of hand, where can you go for safety? Okay, think about that. Just remember to be aware anytime you're in a large group of people. Okay, so let's summarize here. What's your favorite sports team? There are so many different sports. And by the way, some of these, not all of these are team sports. I mean, bodybuilding really isn't a team sport, especially if they're all within the nation and they're um, doing it by themselves. And rock climbing really isn't a team sport. But you can have a favorite sports team or you can have a favorite athlete, right? And you can cheer them. And fans will do lots of different things to cheer or to support their favorite athlete or their favorite team. As we saw, what are the different ways, right? Of course, going to the game, clapping, cheering for your team are different ways, doing songs, dances. More dedicated fans will wear costumes or wear funny uh, uh, outfits or clothes to support their teams. Really dedicated fans will paint themselves, okay? So, are you a fan? Do you watch a lot of sports? Do you have a favorite sports team? What do you do to support that team? Are you a true fan? If they lose, do you say, ah, oh, that's okay, we'll get them next time. If you do, then you are a true fan. Okay, well, that wraps it up for this lesson. I hope you've learned a lot as always. We'll see you guys again next time. Take care.